We welcome you to Little Italy in the Bronx. Adeshina Korki here with you from AlotOfSportsTalk.com as our Euro 2012 NYC tour continues in the northernmost borough of New York City, that being the Bronx. And unlike the namesake neighborhood down in Manhattan, a lot of people will tell you that if you want an authentic slice of Little Italy, the best place to do is come up right here to the BX. And if you take a quick stroll around the neighborhood, can you really blame them for saying that? Authentic pastry shops, Italian restaurants, gift shops, it really is the place to be if you want to feel like you're back in Rome, Venice, or Sicily. And in just a few minutes, this neighborhood will be awash with Azzurri fever as the Italian national soccer team plays its Euro 2012 quarterfinal game against England. So while everyone around here is trying to find a good place to watch the game, trying to get a good seat, as well as us, I'm going to try and find a good cannoli first. They say a good man's hard to find, but a good cannoli might be even harder. As much fun as it was walking around the neighborhood, I had a tough time finding a happening place to take in the game. I thought I'd take a break and have an espresso at this coffee shop, far from a place that would be suffering from Euro fever. Wrong. A diverse and passionate coterie of Azuri supporters squeezed into Dolce Vita. And like the temperatures outside, the emotions inside were running high. as Italy had chance after chance to break the ice. Frustration set in during a scoreless first half, but the owner took it all in stride. Marco, why is this the place to be for Italian soccer? Well, it's the place to be because uh, most of all Italians, we all hang out at the name itself. It's called Dolce Vida, and we all stick together. Now, one last question I need to ask. Mario Balotelli. I like Mario Balotelli. Oh, pro Balotelli. Oh, I don't see that many pro Balotellis usually. I do. I do like Mario right. Balotelli. We'll let Marco get back to work, which means watching the game and some great work as well here at Dolce Vita. Uh, how, many, how many espressos are you going to go through during this game? Uh, we went through about 50 already. <laughs> And at halftime, one of the patrons let me know my presence might not be the most welcome. Now you make me nervous. The last time it was, I got interviewed by the Shilililam was South Africa for the World Cup when I went there. Oh, really? And we didn't do well. So, I don't oh. know, are you going to bring that luck? Because I'm about to move you out if you are. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! There was a whole second half for Italy to atone for its early profligacy. Alas, second verse... Same as the first. Extra time came and decided nothing. So the dreaded shootout awaited. The chances of Italy and England in the quarterfinals finishing in a draw were two to one. Well, the odds makers knew something. Italy and England about to go to penalties, and you can't be too happy if you're an Italian fan. Remember, the 90 World Cup semifinals in their home turf against Argentina, ousted via the penalties. 94 World Cup final in Pasadena, lost to Brazil via penalties. 98 against France, lost via penalties in the quarterfinals in France. And in 2008, the last European Championships, lost to Spain in a shootout in the quarterfinals. But in 2006, of course, the Azzurri did win the World Cup against France in a shootout. Now, a good thing for Italy and its fans, the one country that probably has an even more torturous history when it comes to penalty shootouts in major soccer competitions, it's the English. After an ominous beginning, the Italians managed to gain the upper hand in the shootout. And after Ashley Cole's attempt was saved, the Italians had a chance to win it. The rest speaks for itself.
So it's the post-game show, if you will, here at Dolce Vita, Italy winning 4-2 on penalty kicks, and I'm with my favorite fan of the day here at Dolce Vita, Samantha. And first of all, Samantha, show your uh, fingernails here. I hope you can see them. Yep. It's the Italian flag starting here, and then it ends with their jersey, which is blue. <laughs> And you've done that, what, for every game? I have done that for every game. I started this tradition when Italy won in 2006. That World Cup, I painted my fingers green, white and red, continuously green, white and red, and it did well. So for the next uh, World Cup, I painted them green, white and red, and I even went to South Africa for it, and it didn't go well. So this year it's green, white and red with a blue pinky, just to spike it up. It's not like you have any other superstitions, do you? Uh, except for wearing the same exact outfit, um, and I mean into every little detail that I wore against Italy, Ireland, when Italy won and I came to the same place and I sat in the same seat. Now nah, I think that covers it. She's wearing the same outfit that she wore during the Ireland game. I have one thing to say or do. So England bow out of another major soccer tournament via the shootout. What do you know? It's Italy that moves on to the semifinals at Euro 2012. They will play Germany and the other semifinal which will cover for you from Newark, New Jersey, Portugal against Spain. We thank so much the patrons of Dolce Vita and the coffee shop itself, especially the owner Marco and some amazing patrons inside rooting and urging Italy to win and Italy coming through 4-2 on penalties against England. Once again, you can follow us online at a lot of sports talk.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Koiki underscore sport. We'll see you next time. And for now, I'm going to enjoy my cannoli. I know you're jealous. You're so good.